Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm at a small holding in Wales. I've been here before, so we've just come for an update to see what Bridget and Will have been up to over the last few months. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, if you could please do so, because I have lots of helpful hints and tips all throughout the year from my home garden, my home kitchen, and also from my allotment. And from time to time, I visit other places like this. So as we walk up the lane, so it's the middle of August, so it's really quite lush and green. I don't know if anyone remembers, when I came before, it was the middle of October, just as lockdown opened up and we were allowed to travel and stay in, um, stay in cottages. And they've got a cottage on the side, which is where we've been staying for the last week, and it's been really awesome. It's not just us that can stay there, they do rent it out to the public as well. So on the left-hand side is the community interest orchard, which I will be going through with you later and showing how that's changed over the last few months. But first of all, we're going to go and have a look at, their, um, at the crops they grow in their cottage garden. So as we come through, there's a little gate that we go through. As you can see, they've picked a load of their little apples, um, which are just there all stacked up. So we've been, we've been eating those as well, and they're really lovely. So as we walk through the gate, so sometimes we're greeted by a dog, Caddy. Oh, here comes Caddy. So this is their dog, Caddy. So hello, Caddy. So we've been taking Caddy for lots of lovely walks, and we've had lots of fun. So that's been really awesome. So as we come through, I don't know if you remember, but Will laid some wildflower turf earlier in the year and you could barely see anything in the last video which we will do a tag so you can see what it looked like a few months ago but as you can see it's really filled out you know this wildflower and um, turf is really really good and a really quick way of uh, establishing something like this really good for the insects and the bees and everything and the birds so as we walk into the cottage garden area i'll just shut this gate it's always really important that we keep it shut so things don't get out As we come round, as you can see, everything's a lot more fuller this time of year. Lots of feathers on the ground. They've got some new goslings. Unfortunately, they lost their super-sized goose titan, so they've got some little goslings, which hopefully we'll get the chance to see if they're not hiding from us. So, as we walk up, it's always a hive of activity. They had a, um, they had a group of people here. Uh, assessing all the wildflowers in the area for conservation reasons because obviously it's all about keeping um, this this area as you know as natural as possible and for future generations so they had I don't know about you know a selection of volunteers which helped look look for all the different wildflowers they didn't find anything exotic unfortunately but it was still a really good day I'm told right, as we move up through we've got their lovely log cabin there on the left so, plums on the trees. So, I think they've been eating some of these already. So, we've got plums there. As we walk through, we can take a look at how everything's doing in Wheels Garden. And as you can see, it's almost like a jungle because everything's really filling out, which is exactly what you'd expect to see. It's that time of year. As we go into the, the greenhouse, Wheel has some particularly good peppers and chilli peppers. So really amazing i wish mine looked as good as that i think as i've said before i'm not rhs chain trained on and as you can see will clearly is because he's got such a selection of all different types of chilies and peppers all through here and cucumber there all dangling up and the thing that i'm most in awe of are the aubergines so i've been asking for top tips off will as to how he produces these. As you can see, absolutely copious amounts of aubergines. He tells me he buys grafted plants and that really does make a big difference. So I'm gonna be seeking out grafted plants for next year so that I too, hopefully, can have them. And look, we've got cucumbers hanging from the top here. I mean, it really is a cornucopia of salad goods and chilies and, and what have you. As I come out of this greenhouse, we now have another greenhouse that we can, we can walk through to. Like all good kitchen gardens, they're all quite tightly packed so you can get in as much as possible. Just before we go in there, you can see he's got some blueberries there, but they're not ripe yet. But they're looking particularly lovely. Something I'd like to grow myself, blueberries, but I've never done that yet. Some lovely cosmos, and the bees absolutely love this. That's absolutely beautiful. Really love that. 
So as we come through into the second greenhouse, we've got lots of tomatoes in here and strawberries, so all different varieties. <laughs> Other bits here, which I don't know what they are actually. I um, haven't got Will with me, he's had to go off and do some jobs, as you can imagine, having a small holding like this, there's always plenty of work to be done. So I think, oh there we go, some cauliflowers and various other brassicas there, and like everyone, we all suffer from a little bit of damage from things, we all have to look after, so that's his shallots drying there and his garlic, so he dries his stuff, obviously in his greenhouse, so if he's doing it, I think it's a pretty good rule of thumb that we can do it too. So, and... I see a lot of people plant something thinking that, thinking that it's something else. And do you know what? It happens to the best of people because Will thought this was a cucumber and it's turned out to be a type of courgette. So, you know, it happens to everybody that sometimes you plant something and it's either the wrong seed in the seed packet or you just get them muddled up. Sometimes difficult to tell. As you can see, he's got lots of different types of tomatoes here. And I know they've been picking some, so you can't see any right ones, but that's because they've been out. And I saw Bridget come back with a great big bowl full yesterday of tomatoes really really lovely looking he's had strawberries here as you can see which looks like they've finished and he's got his peach tree here um which is doing really well i don't know whether he's got any peaches off it but it's looking lovely and lush some carrots in this bed here that he's been growing and more tomatoes over the back in fact i can see some ripe ones I know uh, Bridget and Will make lots and lots of sauces, passata sauces, and cook things up to store for the winter, which is something I often do passata. And as you can see, he's got great big drums of carrots, because he does actually show carrots, although there hasn't been much showing this year, but it is a really good way of getting really good-sized carrots when they're planted like this in sand, because they'll, they'll get much bigger. Well, that's the hope, anyway. So that's the second greenhouse done, and as we walk through... There's lots of other lovely things that are growing. That was the asparagus there, which has obviously gone to seed, but that's what it should, should look like. So when it's finished, he's got a few raspberries there, not many, but a couple. As we move on, these are his squashes and pumpkins, which are looking lovely. He's a little bit behind with some things because in Wales it's a little bit colder, so he'll be a little bit behind what I've got in Kent. He's obviously got some little lovely ones falling. I can see quite a few inside that are just starting to fall. As we move on, we've got leeks here. And I actually think his leeks are actually further ahead of mine. They're looking really lovely. And his onions are looking really good. And he hasn't, it looks like he hasn't lifted his yet. His haven't quite flopped over. But he's got some beautiful sized onions here. I mean, they are just amazing. So... I think one onion would probably do you about four dinners. So as we move over, there's some nasturtiums mixed in with some courgettes. Now these nasturtiums, I do have some of these at home actually. They're really lovely. You can actually eat the flowers and the leaves. They're particularly tasty and they're a good companion planter. We've got a lovely big marrow in there that I can see. So lots of really good stuff. When I come to Bridget and Will's, I'm always in awe of everything that they do because they always do everything on such a grand scale compared to me. Beautiful sunflowers, so no doubt these are probably going to be for the birds because we'll always feed the birds. We have parsnips, which are definitely much further ahead of mine. No, they're not parsnips, they're celeriac. If I look down there, I've got some celeriac. But I think I've never quite mastered, but I would like to. The end of their broccoli, as you can see, they've still got some stems and uh, they do what I do. You cut out the main stem, but you can still get some really good stems off of the rest of the plant. So I never pull the whole thing up. I always leave mine as well and do what they've done. We've got their potatoes over there, and they've already said to us that their potatoes are a little bit behind to ours because I've already dug most of mine. Some more strawberries. It's obviously something that they like quite a lot. And some kale here. I think that's Cavanero, that one. So, and... Also some more leeks as well. I think the reason I, uh, Will's put this around there is he's trying to blanch the stems of his leeks to make them whiter. So the purpose of this round there is to make the leeks of those stems whiter. So more brassicas as we come up here. So like most of us, we have to net things, otherwise the bugs and things get them. So we've got some lovely cabbages there, some lettuces under here. Oh, I think I just heard one of the geese. So hopefully we can go and see them in a minute. I didn't ask what this was, but I think it might be quinoa, actually, which you can grow in this country. So as we move over, 
I've got a little bit of chard here, which looks like it's gone to seed. Um, that's what happens after a bit of time. But there is some chard down there that hasn't gone to seed. So it's, uh, I've got plenty of bits in here. As we wander up, we've got more brassicas, which look quite lovely. And the rhubarb's right up at the very end. And I've got a lovely selection of different types of beans here, runner beans, which are looking pretty awesome. They're definitely looking better than mine. So they're looking really good as well. Uh, so we're just leaving the garden area. The reason this is all fenced off is because various predators get them, get, get at them, including their own geese and ducks. We're just going to go and find the geese, which I think are just up here. There'll be a bit of noise when we do find them, no doubt. They're very friendly, but they do make a lot of noise. So, hello geese. And if you can see, the bigger ones are obviously the mature ones. Although they make a lot of noise, they are very friendly with people. Um, they're just warning us not to go too close. And you can see one of the little baby goslings just there. So that one was hatched here on the farm. So that one stays with all the grown-up ones. There's some others that were brought in and they're staying separately at the moment. They just naturally go together that way. They feel more comfortable. So they're going to make a bit of noise when we go up, but absolutely fine. So, it's been quite enjoyable seeing these geese, I can tell you. And there's also some ducks in there and some chickens. So if we move over... Will and Bridget also have um, chickens and ducks. Now they all roam around the small holding, but obviously this is their little area that they go in at night, so they're safe from predators. So some lovely chickens and a cockerel there, and a couple of ducks just up there. One of them's very noisy, um, but it's not coming out to be noisy, but it's quite entertaining. There we go, it's starting to quiet. That's the noisy one. He might follow us out if we're really lucky just to show who's boss. So I want to try and find the other goslings, but I don't know if I will, Dan. So they've got some goslings that were hatched out at the farm by Bridget and Will, not by the geese themselves. So these were eggs that were brought in. They've been in here overnight because they have to be shut up, otherwise predators, predators could get to them. So come on in, you're coming out. So there's five of them, and they're all coming out. They make a really lovely sound and we've really enjoyed spending time with them. So, hello! So they're coming to say hello to the camera. Come on in. It's daytime now. You can come out. There we go. And they really are very cute. Makes you want to get geese yourself. So, people always think of geese as really quite scary. And they kind of make a lot of noise, but actually they're really, really friendly and there's nothing to be scared of if they're used to you. It does all depend on whose geese you're looking at. But Will and Bridget are very human friendly and wouldn't hurt you. So, so that's the kitchen garden, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, Will's moved, he's still got some beehives here, as you can see, um, but he's moved some into the community orchard. So this is kind of like a wilding area, which obviously it's here for the countryside for the bees, for the birds, and for everything to do what it needs to do naturally. So we're going to move over to the community orchard now, and I'm going to show you what's been going on there. As we walk back past the cottage, as you can see, the wildflowers have really established beautifully. This is the original cottage that was here when Will and Bridget first got here, and this is the annex that they've built on the side that we've been staying in, and it really is quite lovely. They've got lots of forms of um, natural heating, you know, solar, um, heat pumps, that sort of thing. A real inspiration for anyone who's really trying to save the environment and live a good life, so well worth visiting if that's what tick your boxes which it very much does ours it's very much something we would like to do ourselves as we move around they've got a kind of like a sunroom there and you can sit out and enjoy the birds enjoy the countryside and all the beautiful uh, plants that they've got here there's often a lot of birds feeding on the bird feeders and you do get squirrels as well it's really quite beautiful just to sit here and just watch nature go by very very therapeutic indeed so as we walk around, we can go and take a look at the community orchard. So we've got a 
another gate we can go through. The orchard is just on the opposite side of the road, so it's not very far at all. So we just walk up and over. Really beautiful walks indeed. Every day we've been walking, it's been absolutely fantastic. They've got a bell tent for people that want to stay and have an outdoor experience. They've got some lovely benches there for people that come and visit the community orchard because the whole point of the community orchard is that it's for the people. So for the local people and for people to visit and do community projects to help the environment and to enhance people's lives. You can, as you can see, the wildflowers are beautifully established in the borders and all the trees I talked about in the last video, as you can see, are all coming on absolutely beautifully here. So I think they've even been harvesting a few off. As you can see, there's a few fruits on the trees up here. And Will came through earlier with some blueberries. So things are really starting to happen now. When we came at the beginning of the year or in April, so things really did, you know, there wasn't really much happening. They'd just been planted, but there's even a few little apples on there, which is absolutely fantastic. So... And if we walk up and through, being careful not to knock any of the new seedlings off because they're creating lots of little hedgerows, which will be really, really good for nature. You've got beautiful countryside, as you can see, up around. So it's just absolutely breathtaking to walk around here every morning. So I live in what I consider quite a nice rural area, but this is, this is definitely something else, definitely something good for the soul. So the hives have been moved and obviously the bees going all around these trees will help everything pollinate. So that would be really good for the area. So as we move up, there's a wheel's got an old track to go in, which my husband and son have been having a go on. He's been um, mowing the, the, the grass with it. It was something that when we came in April, he'd got up, but no one was really sure whether they were going to get it up and running. It's one of those things that when you have a project like this, everything is a bit of a moneyless pit really, and you can't afford to buy brand new things. You have to buy things that are second hand, and sometimes when you get them, you don't know whether they're going to work or not. And actually, Will was really not quite sure whether he'd get this thing going, but he has, and it's working, so it's really, really worth it. So if we move up, we can take a look at the tractor. So you definitely get your steps in if you lived in a place like this. So it's really lovely. So we've been taking their dog Caddy for a walk every day, which has been really lovely because we don't have our own dog. We have, we have a cat and lots of chickens, but we don't have a dog yet. These are the blueberries I was talking about. And as you can see, there's sheep's wool around it. It acts like a mulch. I don't know if a lot of people realise, but unfortunately sheep's wool now, it really isn't worth a lot of money at all. So a lot of the sheep farmers don't know what to do with it. And obviously if you've got someone like Will who's prepared to take some off the farmer's hands and use it for good purpose, then that's really fantastic. He's got cardboard down and then he's got the sheep's wool over the top of it. So to create a mulch to stop weeds. And then you've got all these lovely little blueberries here. So he's got quite a lot of blueberry plants here. So I'm quite excited to see how they establish over the next few years. Because like I say, that's something that I really like, blueberries. Um, I've never really grown them because I thought they'd be too difficult to grow. But if Will's doing that, I'll have to get some top tips off of him, which no doubt I'll be sharing with you once I've done it for myself. So as we move over, we've got this tractor I was talking about. And we've got our son there, who's in completely in awe with this tractor. Because um, mo most like, like most young boys, tractors are very exciting. From a young age, Sid's always liked tractors. Um, and, and nothing's changed really. So my son was very excited indeed when we got here and found out the tractor was working and it could actually do the job it was meant for. So hello Caddy. So here's the tractor which has been restored and now runs and it's got a box on the back to mow the grass. So that's that's really awesome. I would show it to you in practice but it's not something I can do, I can't drive it. My husband's had a go and my son has, um, but I'm not quite brave enough. Well, I hope everyone's really enjoyed the update of Wales. It really is absolutely fantastic and a really inspirational place. It certainly always inspires me to try something new. I always have something that I take back home and then do myself. And I really hope that my video has got you all thinking of things you could do um, to make your life better. And if you've got any questions or queries, as ever, please do put them in the comments. We put, we'll put a link in the description if you want to come and visit Will and Bridget so you can contact them yourselves 
and visit them. But if not, if this just inspires you or makes you have a better day, then that's what it's meant for.